right, guys. It is very cold. It's like negative five this morning. But I am at Washington State's premier yellow perch fishery. As you can tell, I'm already having a really good morning of catching some fat 11 to 13 inch perch. Some real big fish in here. Look at this beast there. And you can see I got a lot of fish stacked on the bottom here. And I got them coming in on the camera. That guy says he's hungry. Where's my food? So let's get down there to him. There's a bunch of fish right there coming in. That first one missed. That one's chewing on the... Uh, it's just got a hold of the wax worm there. You see that? Let's see if we can get one to actually take it all the way in. That guy's uber excited about it. Let's see if we can center this up a little bit. There we go. That guy's thinking about it. He's got a head. Of, he's they're grabbing the head of the jig. That's a dink. I like that one behind him. He looks like a nice big fatty. That one grabbed the jig head. There's a little one. Oh, there we go. <laughs> That's an aggressive tick. Little guy. Littlest one of the day so far. Alright, we're down at the bottom now. I got a first customer that followed it down with it. Ooh, that's a nice sized fish. Oh, he missed. They got terrible aim. Come on, guys. No. That's, I want that one that's to the right. Let's see if it'll come back. That guy's not too bad either. Not the biggest. Ooh. Did you see that? He outsmarted me. Any of those fish would do. Come on. There you go. <laughs> so when I first started ice fishing uh, at Curlew Lake, probably, oh geez, almost six, seven years ago, uh, there really wasn't that many people. Like, wow, look at the size of that. And that is why people come to this lake. And this is why, this is one of those few lakes that I'm like really glad that I put on the map. Like, this is a really amazing yellow perch fish. Look at the size of these fish. They're going to get a really nice cut of meat off of a fish that size. And, you know, these fish were illegally dumped here by bucket biologists. And this lake was previously managed primarily for rainbow trout. But it's incredible to come out here now. On, you can come out here on any given day when there's ice. And there's a half dozen people out here or more. And you come out on the weekends, it's amazing. There'll be 20, 30, 40, 50 people here. And that has got to be such a great benefit to the local community here, especially Town Republic and some of the resorts on the lake that stay open during the winter. You know, because normally that was a time of year they probably didn't generate a lot of tourism dollars. And it's just great to see the potential of a non-rainbow trout fishery. I feel like the state tends to overly focus on their trout fisheries and ignore the potential of these spiny ray and ice fishing fisheries. It's a nice fish. Oh, that was terrible. There we go. And one of the first year I came out here, I. I'd come out and there would maybe be, you know, two or three people, even on a weekend. And now, um, it's a much busier place. And what's great about these yellow perch fisheries, they can sustain a really heavy harvest. Um, you can really pressure these populations and it generally benefits them as it keeps the average size up. So I'm always happy to put this place on the map and share what I know about this lake. You know, and I think 
for me, I look at what Idaho did with Cascade Lake, and now it's like an international destination. People come from all over the world, all over the United States to fish that. And I wish that, you know, the state of Washington would try and do something like that here, replicate something like that here. This is a lake that has potential if it was managed a little bit more uh, for that. But I still feel like they're really trying to push heavy on the, the uh, trout fishery here. And it's, you're, they're just shoving a square peg through a round hole, in my opinion. I feel like we've got a billion trout fisheries in this state. We need another one, like I need another hole in my head. But we definitely could use some trophy spiny ray fisheries. Look at all these perch. Oh, that's a big one. <laughs> that's a big one. Came up out of the back of the pack there. Yeah, that's a chunk stop. Interestingly, a study done by WDFW, uh, a creel and mark recapture study in 2022 and 2023 found some really surprising uh, results. Well, surprising to them, I guess, because what they discovered is that uh, most of the anglers coming to Curly Lake were coming to catch yellow perch, not trout, with the exception of the month of May and that anglers were actually uh, utilizing a fairly significant portion of the population of yellow perch above eight inches in the lake. They estimated the lake had around 154,000 yellow perch and harvest was right around 81,000. So it was showing that, you know, it's that type of utilization is what is maintaining this quality perch fishery. And as long as that pressure is kept up, it's gonna keep this fishery going and the reason people want to go there is to catch these large perch and they show that there's an abundance of large perch especially above 10 inches they even had some catches up to 14 inches in their creel and that this was generating over a half million dollars in local revenue uh, for the outlying communities so you know this just goes to prove what i've been saying all along and that is that you know, there is value in these spiny ray fisheries if you can maintain them at a higher level and promote them, which is something that WDFW has never done a great job of doing. And what really shocked me was this line towards the end of this document, and that is, given the popularity of the Curlew Lake yellow perch fishery, a management paradigm shift from trout emphasis to a focus on maintenance of high quality yellow perch fishery is warranted. I don't think I've ever seen WDFW admit that, you know, maybe we shouldn't be just doing trout. So maybe they're coming around. I don't know. I'm hopeful. Most years, Curly Lake will freeze over by mid-December to mid-January, and it will typically hold ice anywhere from into March or April, depending on the year. Most years, it seems like ice out is sometime in March. So it has a solid two to three month ice season annually. It hosts uh, ice fishing tournaments for perch and just a really great fishery. What's really nice about it is the state parks here have a really nice state park in the south end of the lake and they do a wonderful job of plowing access to it. Um, whoever's managing that, kudos to them because they're doing a great job. It makes it so people even without people that there we go <laughs> people that don't have a you know great traction can still get down in down in here and fish. So it has everything that uh, can make it a great fishery. It's got the potential to produce some really large perch. I've got perch here up up if, above 14 inches. It's got easy access. It's got reliable thick ice. Today I'm on about seven, eight inches of ice. It has a town not far away, the town of Republic, which has great hotels to stay at and restaurants. And it has some resorts on the lake. I feel like a lot of these resorts aren't really taking advantage of the ice fishery yet, but there's definitely potential, more potential there than I think what is being exploited. Okay, Ooh, that's a nice fish. Chewing on the head. 
let go of the head and eat the tail, buddy. Ooh, that's a big one. Look at all those perch. That is so cool, isn't it? Look at all those perch on the bottom. It's just like a wall of perch. There's my jig going down. It's awesome. The early ice, like the first 30 days after ice forms is generally the best time to come up here. Uh, the fish tend to be more aggressive at that time. Man, too many perch went for it at the same time there. So when you get to the state park, there's a, a pretty small boat ramp and both to the north and south, there's little islands. And the big basin between those two islands. Oh, oh, how did I not hook him? Did you see that? That's an aggressive take. The basin between those two islands is anywhere from 20 to 35 feet deep. And it's usually loaded with these roving schools of yellow perch. There we go. Got that guy. I don't think he's very big though. Now you might have to move around to find them, and I definitely recommend. Um, yeah, it's the smallest one we've got so far today. You might have to move around a bit to find these fish, and I do recommend having sonar because it's going to make a big difference in terms of being able to locate them. But once you locate them, they tend to be in the same spot they'll hold in that same spot for most of the day um, i had to drill like three holes this morning and on the third hole i marked a bunch of fish and then i've just been sitting here and i'm probably getting close to 25. my goal is to catch 50 before noon and i got here around nine o'clock and i only put a self-imposed limit of 50 because that's about all i can mentally handle to fillet when i get home before I lose my mind. It's not a bad fish. I think I might have lost my bait on the way down. All I got is plastic on there now. Doesn't matter though. But as the winter progresses, these fish, yeah, that's a much better grade of fish. As the winter progresses, these fish will tend to move out deeper and deeper. And they may even move north of the island um, where the water drops off even to like 50, 60 feet deep. Now for bait, I highly recommend just simple tungsten jigs. You can get them at pretty much every Walmart. You want the tungsten because it gets down there in a hurry. And like I said, these fish are at 30, 35 feet deep. That fish missed it terribly. And Having that heavier lure helps get you down there to, there we go, to that depth. The fish had that camera swinging, but it swung right back so I could watch him take it. Now I'm using a camera. Whoa, that's a fatty. I'm using a camera, but you definitely want to use, um, if you don't have a camera, you definitely want to use a highly sensitive rod tip. So I got a spring bobber on this rod here. And a fast action rod with a spring bobber is pretty much the perfect rod for this fishery. So just buy like a medium fast action ice fishing rod. You can get them for dirt cheap, like 10, 15 bucks. And then you can, some that will have, some will have a built-in spring bobber and I'll put links to the those below. But you can also just buy an aftermarket spring bobber and put it on there. And uh, the reason you want the spring bobber is because they bite really light. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off the, so I can't see the camera screen and I'm just gonna use, use just my spring bobber and sonar so I can see my jig going down on the sonar. If you don't have sonar, and you're fishing blind, what I recommend to do is just drop in all the way down until you hit the bottom. I do think the spring bobber or sensitive tip rod is the key here. I also recommend braid or fluorocarbon line around four pound test um, as your main line. You, just, you can let it drop all the way to the bottom until it's stagnant so it can't drop anymore. So now I know I'm on the bottom. 
I'm going to pick it up and just do one or two cranks off the bottom. Um, oh, there's a good hit right there. I just missed it. It's pretty common that they're going to hit right after you pull it up off the bottom. If you don't get bit again, do a couple little jigs. Wait a few seconds. Looking for that spring bobber to either go down or come up. Because if they come up and hit it from below, it'll lift the spring bobber up. And if they're pulling down on it, then you'll see it uh, tip down. If you don't get any bites, come up a little bit higher. Jig it. If that doesn't work, then try going all the way back down the bottom again. Let it fall back down to the bottom. There you go. Do a couple aggressive jigs. A couple more aggressive jigs. And let it hang in there. Do one more crank up off the bottom. Oh, there's a bite. Got it. <laughs> Sometimes just moving it just a little bit up through the water column can make a difference. There we go. Nice size fish too. So if you're fishing blind, without sonar, without camera, just go to the bottom, which takes even a while, even with a fairly large jig like I'm using today. Just get all the way down there. Until your line goes, you can tell when you've hit the bottom because the line will, um, won't will spool off. It'll like kind of go slack as you're dropping it right now. It's still just falling. And then all of a sudden it'll just bunch up on itself. So there, you can see how it's all bunched up here. I'm on the bottom. So I'm going to do one or two cranks up. And then I'm just going to hold still. That might have been a subtle bite. I probably would have had that if that was on the camera. I could have seen him take it in. There it was. Ooh, that spring bobber barely moved. This feels like a small one. Yep. That's all there is to it. There's no size limit. There is no possession limit. You can take as many as you want, and I highly encourage that you do. The more you take from here, the better this fishery is going to get. It's going to drive up the average size. Food is the limiting resource. They have incredible reproductive potential. So don't feel guilty about coming up here if you wanna catch 200 perch and feed the entire family. Go. You cannot over harvest these fish. Anybody who tells you otherwise, that is a dink, I don't want him. It's just full of bull poo poo. Okay, as far as baits go, um, Really anything will work. Um, spikes, maggots, mealworms, waxworms. Some days they are picky. Um, you can even use little pieces of night crawler. So it's good to have a couple baits on hand at all times just in case that happens to be one of those days they're picky. Today they're not super picky. They're kind of aggressive. You can even if you can get your first perch, you can even just take the eyeball out of one of the perch that you catch and use that. But you gotta get that first perch. The eyeballs stay on there nice and uh, you can catch like, you know, 10, 20 perch off of one eyeball. That's a nicer fish. Not the jumbos I was getting this morning, but I'll take it. Uh, besides little tungsten jigs, you can also use things like cast masters, little tiny cast masters, and Swedish pimples. But I really think tungsten jigs is where it's at here. The natural diet of the fish in this lake is just small little uh, native shrimp, little amphipods. And their bellies are often full of those, so they're eating really diminutive prey items, and they'll... They seem to really just like that smaller presentation. There you go, that's a nice fish. 
just taking the plastic. The heavy boy. Oh, oh, dude, that is a perchzilla. And that right there is why we come to Curly Lake. That is a nice sized perch. You're gonna get an excellent cut of meat that you won't believe how much meat you get off, but look how fat they are across the back. That is just all meat. Same family as walleye. They're in the perch family. They taste really similar. Very firm, white meat. And the fish in this like really clean meat. I rarely see parasites or anything. And it's just a great, healthy, lean, white meat fish that tastes delicious. Well, my uh, heater just ran out of fuel. So I need to make quick work of these. Last part of my limit. Let's see if we can get one more fish on camera here. And then I just need to get about 15 more and I'll have my 50 limit for the morning. Alright, there's my jig just fell across in front of there. Ooh, that's a nice fish. Come get it, come get it. Either one of you. And that, the small guy tried to grab it but couldn't get in his mouth. Just got the ball in his mouth. These ones down near the bottom aren't as aggressive as the ones at the top of the school. There we go. That's a nice fish too. I'll take that one. So if you have time this winter, get up to Curly Lake. Put some perch on top of the ice and just have a great day. These are awesome eating fish. It's probably one of the most unique perch fisheries in the state and that the average size of the fish is really good. Alright, I'll see you guys next time. Just remember, fish smarter, not harder. Bye guys.